Hello, welcome to week two of our Storyteller podcast. So we are in a sermon series on Sunday morning called Storyteller because Jesus is the greatest storyteller and Jesus always talked in parables. So we're going to kind of dissect this week's parable, um, but we have our guest with us today who's going to help us with that, Jamie Hotchkiss. Yay, get all the clapping. Woo! Appreciate that. Yeah, was and everybody some, knows you. Was there some can clap in that? <laughs> <laughs> right, Jamie? Mm, right, right. Yeah, because you were, you were a cop, so you probably mm. pulled half of us over. Well, a few. No, a few. right. Now, a lot of them I don't remember. Right. <laughs> so now you're selling school buses. Yep. And you just won something. Like yeah, you're right a, for county council. Yeah. Yeah, in the primary. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Well, I think. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> You'll see how yeah, it goes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So do you want me to do a recap yep, on recap it? Okay. It, what we so uh, like Jennifer said, you know, we're going through, you know, these parables with the two ideas that Jesus taught by story, but also unlocked mysteries. Um, and so this week was the whole idea of how do we, how do we get ready? And specifically it comes from, you know, in Luke 17, they're talking about this whole idea of, you know, how did people in Noah's time miss it? You know, which I always mm. thought was fascinating too. Very, you know, yeah. somebody's going to sit there build an ark, and you got all these people around. How do you miss somebody saying to you, "Hey, you know, God's saying mm-hmm. here's an ark." You know, and they waited to the first rain drop, and it was too late. Same mm-hmm. with Lot's life. You know, he goes in an angel, like an angel from the mm-hmm. Lord, shows up at your house. Mm-hmm. You know, what more of a sign? And mm-hmm. says the only thing you have to do is just not look back. And you ever think though, mm-hmm. when you're when it's, when the ark was being built? I mean, really, what would we do? I mean, you, I think you mentioned that Sunday. You, that thing would have been crazy. It's like Bruce Almighty. Isn't right. that a thing? Right? Isn't yeah. that movie. a I movie? Mean, right? I just, I, I'm thinking how I would respond to that. Look right. at that quack. I mean, mm-hmm. I might have responded that way. Right. I mean. You would have thought the same thing. Like, right. what is somebody mm-hmm. What is somebody doing? And, mm-hmm. and that's what I mean. I guess I don't know. But I guess for us, I think the, the, the issue that he's trying to see for all of us is will we live our entire life? And I think this is the point of the parable. Could you live your entire life around all of these things and still miss Jesus? Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. whether it's every everyday life or whether it's at the end, because Mm -hmm. that is the real reality. And I know I probably talk about it way more than I should, but the real reality is there's tons of people that are going to be doing religious things and think they're mm-hmm. good, and then they're mm-hmm. not going to know mm-hmm. who he is. So then you go into Luke 21, and you read it, and it talks about the idea of there are going to be physical signs. Like, they're like, well, if it's going to be the end of time, mm-hmm. what are going to be the physical signs? Which mm-hmm. I think is an indication mm-hmm. to all of us, right, of the problem with us, which is instead of just being prepared, Jamie, you said this before we got on. Mm-hmm. Do you really, if you are in relationship mm-hmm. with Jesus, do you really need a sign? Mm-hmm. Right. Like, do you really need to like look out there and see there's going to an earthquake, mm-hmm. you know, happening? But anyway, so then he goes on and says physical signs, but it's like a fig tree. You know, the fig tree, if it, if the, if it's got leaves, it's spring, mm-hmm. which means summer's coming. Mm-hmm. Pretty simple. That That's the parable. But the part that got me, and this was what I think probably we spent a lot of time on, is it says, watch out, don't be deceived. Because the way you're going to miss the signs if you got a heart problem, Mm -hmm. right? He's like, the heart is going to be in the wrong place. And the wrong place being distracted by the things of this world, right? That you could be so distracted by the things of this world. So for me personally, this was, this was not that I don't have a relationship with Christ and not that I you know, don't love my Lord, but there are times where I struggle being in the moment, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know if that's how it is for you guys, or if you struggle with any Mm -hmm. of those things or, cause I'm always thinking about what's next. What's the next thing? What's the next, what's the next, uh, process that you need to get done? What's the next meeting you need to be in? And so I don't know. I I don't know what you took away from it, Jamie, or what your thoughts were. And just to piggyback off that, I, I, my biggest struggle is during my devotional time or my quiet time and being being quiet is as you talked about Sunday is awful (laughs) and you know you're two you're a minute and a half in you're thinking okay what email do I need to send (laughs) who do I need to call what could I be doing right Mm -hmm. now that's going to be it's going to help my day right and so that that's that is really tough Um, can you do silence Jennifer um not real well like no songs just sitting there not real well. Oh man, I'm terrible. I, if I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm journaling. Yeah, that's what you I know. Mean. I was I like to, just... to totally be still. No, I'm not real well. I'm good at that. 
yeah. I'll fall asleep. Yeah. Yeah, because I had to ask myself this question is, is that am I listening or am I manipulating the conversation mm -hmm. by my devotions and by what I want mm -hmm. out of my day or by what the circumstances of life? And I just wondered how many times have I missed a conversation that he would want to have with me because right. I wanted to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. And then I know? think it's the same with prayer. I mean, when you are praying, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be listening. It's supposed to be two ways. And you know, I, I, I know there are people that have heard the audible voice of God, right? Mm -hmm. But I've never mm. actually heard the audible voice of God. And so have you had that saying? feeling though? Like, have you had that, like, I know God's speaking to me? I don't know that I've had that specifically, or I've yeah. just not seen it hmm. or I've been distracted hmm. um, because I, I am easily distracted. I'm a, I'm a, I'm exactly what you uh, referred to Sunday morning. I'm go, go, go. Right. My wife makes fun of me because you can't stay home for one evening and do nothing. <laughs> um, because just because I just like to go, I like to be busy. Right. And, it, and it, again, if you're not busy, you're a bum, like you said. It, right. And, uh, and I know you're busy. Mm -hmm. I see you go by my house all the time with a uh, grain no. truck. <laughs> driving a you grain know, truck, driving a grain truck. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm usually going to work or going to play pickleball or going to a meeting or going to do something else. Right. And so, um, so yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I mean, I, the signs, I'm just not, it, it's great. I guess if you want to know what's going on, but right. if you, if you're prepared or if you're preparing for your eternity, then the signs don't mean anything. We know the world's going to fall. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we know the world is ruled by Satan and we're all part of it, unfortunately. Yeah. Let me get your perspective on a couple of things. So sure. what about the Sabbath and what about simplicity? Because those two things in my conversations with people, that was, uh, because they're like, well, we don't have to, we don't have to observe the Sabbath. You know, that's mm -hmm. not a, that was a Jewish thing back then. And I'm like, yeah, I, I get it from a legalistic mm -hmm. standpoint, but is the Sabbath important should we do it? Because, you know, before they're arguing about it in scripture mm -hmm. about like, don't heal somebody. Now we're not talking about mm -hmm. not do, I mean, we're doing stuff all the mm -hmm. time. Absolutely. On the and, side. And, you know, some people have a different perspective on that. Yeah. I mean, growing up, you didn't do, uh, you didn't do anything on Sunday. I mean, right. you didn't go out to eat on a Sunday because right. you were spending money. Right. Um, but, uh, you, you wouldn't probably be mowing the yard. You probably wouldn't be doing chores or you mm -hmm. probably wouldn't. I mean, unless you're a farmer, <laughs> yeah. right. You have right. to do chores. Right. But, um, like, you know, my resting is sitting on the mower. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I did that yesterday. Right. You know, I like sitting on the mower and mowing right. my yard. Right. Um, but it just still work, right? And, I don't and know. That's what I, I'm that's asking. Just it. That, that's but my I think, point. I, is I, that really? Because I think the idea of the Sabbath was rest, delight in the Lord, mm -hmm. and be in his presence. Mm -hmm. So can you rest and delight in the Lord on the mower? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that that's the thing that I was trying to get through because I do think there's a difference between finding the things that refresh our soul, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that what the Sabbath is supposed to be? What mm -hmm. are those things that refresh us? What are those things are? And what are the things are we doing because we don't trust God, mm -hmm. right? Like what are those things trying to get another day of work in? And so did you grow up exercising the Sabbath? Did you grow up with no, no, did you? Not necessarily the Sabbath, but Sunday was very set aside. Yeah. Um, it's probably more relational. I'm like, yeah. I remember going to my grandma's all the time. You yep. know, my cousins would be there. I mean, we went a lot and had lunch, and it a was lot family, of family time, meetings. you know. Family time. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like, and, and that just doesn't happen as mm. much anymore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, growing I, up, mm -hmm. my, my mom would. We had roast every Sunday because mm -hmm. roast or steak. you'd yep, have roast, roast mm -hmm. in a little blue, whatever those little blue pans were. And mm -hmm. she put it in the night before and then, or Potatoes put it, yeah, and you put it in the and oven and you mm -hmm. came home. Cause I can remember mm -hmm. it was probably middle school or high school. And we were like, we're going out to McDonald's. <laughs> like you're allowed to, yeah. you're allowed to go. That's you're allowed real, to eat something yeah. other than roast on a Sunday more <laughs> on a Sunday. We graduated. We just to, never did funny. it. We graduated to Dairy Queen, I think mm. from roast beef at one time. We, yeah. we decided to, you know, make it ice cream and hamburgers, but mm. that was still with the family. Yeah. You know, so. So today do you practice the Sabbath? I mean, tell me what your thoughts are, or would you encourage I, practicing I, the Sabbath? I, I what think, are your thoughts? I mean, I guess, def, what's your definition of practicing the Sabbath? Yeah, I don't know. I, that, uh, you tell you know, me. So I think if you, you need to set, if your work schedule, I mean, I get people, I, I worked Sundays for a lot of my career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to still set a day aside, whether it be a Sunday or uh, now that I'm on a normal work schedule mm -hmm. um, and have been for several years, um, I think your devotion to 
uh, your church family and going to church uh, is very important. And, you know, I, you know, growing up and having two boys, you want to raise them up right. You know, so far, knock on wood, you know, they're 21 and eight, almost mm-hmm. 18, and they're still coming to church. And yeah. so that's, that's always good. Um, and being in relationship with people at your church. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I spend some time on Saturday mornings with guys I've gone to church with for years. Mm-hmm. We either ride motorcycles to breakfast mm-hmm. or we just meet for breakfast or whatever. Right. And um, just having those good relationships and being, building each other up a little yeah. bit. Um, but also uh, Sundays, of course, the older I get, it's so enjoyable. Uh, my wife and I will take a nap on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Amen, um, brother. And you know, naps on Sundays. And, and generally, if you're a Bears fan during football season, it's easy you to fall napping asleep. anyway. Yeah, it's, it's easy to fall asleep. <laughs> right. Of course, Nick? this this year Come could be there. our year, Nick. This oh, year could geez. be our year. Yeah. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think relaxation and 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 getting involved in church, of course, as involved in church as I've been over the years. Um, it, 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 it's not all resting, right? Yeah. I mean, you all know that here, uh, with the, all the production and everything goes into a Sunday morning, it turns into pretty much a full day. Right. If you're on the worship team or if you're on the sound team or you're doing anything. So, yeah, I mean, but then you get, you get done at noon and mm-hmm. you, you, you can yeah. go rest or you can do whatever you need to do. But, uh, yeah. So uh, what about simplicity? How can we make our lives or should we, should we live simpler lives? Should. Should? Very sim- very easy to say, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. That. I mean, yeah. I, I, again, because the question is, so uh, in that book, The Ruthless mm-hmm. Elimination of Hurry, talks about how the progression of technology was supposed to make life easier, but it's made us more efficient, more exhausted, and more wore out than we've ever been in life. Like, yeah. the the... Technology has yes made us more efficient, but we just filled it with mm-hmm. something else. It like just we're, makes your we're pace on, that much faster. Yeah, we're just that we're running that mm-hmm. much faster of a pace. And so, you know, the idea of simplicity, right? And what does simplicity look like in our lives? And is it important when it comes to because this was the thing for me. This is what I'm still processing. I don't believe in not doing anything. So I don't mm-hmm. believe that you should sit around and do nothing. But I do think that what we should be doing should never be in a hurry. We should always mm-hmm. be able to say, hey, I don't have to hurry up and get to the next thing. I don't mm-hmm. have to hurry up and be at the next thing. I don't always have to, when I'm in a meeting, I don't always have to be thinking about what am I doing next? What am mm-hmm. I doing next? Like learning or practicing being in the moment. And I just wonder when you have a complicated life, mm-hmm. how easy is that to do, to be in the moment? Not right. just with people, even with mm-hmm. Jesus, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. to be able to have that. And so for like, what does it look like? If you were going to give, if you were going to give wisdom to people and say, here's some things you should try when it comes to living a simpler life, what would you do? What would you say? Well, I mean, speaking to myself as well, obviously, but I think one of the main things is, as you alluded to, is putting the phone down. Mm. Um, yeah, that's that's the big that's the biggest distraction we have in mm. life. Uh, myself and most families, I think, as you said, sit around the table or sit around the couch. Mm. Yeah, you're watching a TV show. You don't even know in the same room with anybody else. Or right. you might be having a conversation. Are you listening to me? You know, <laughs> they don't hear a word you're saying because they're looking at something else. Um, and guilty, you know. Um, and, and maybe not trying to be involved in everything mm. that you can be involved in, which I'm guilty of. Mm. Uh, I like to be involved in stuff, and I like to be busy. And so I, I don't know. I don't know if it's uh, – um, with schedules and sports schedules mm-hmm. and things, I mean, growing up, I mean, you had, you had family meals every right. night. You sat down as a family. I, you know, I, that doesn't happen very often anymore. At least not at our house, right? Because um, one person's got practice this time, one person's at the gym this time. Mm-hmm. I'm playing pickleball this time, or right. going to a meeting here or there, and so it's like, okay, cook. She'll cook some food, and we'll just warm it up as we come home, right? You right. know, so doing eating shifts, yeah, right? Right. <laughs> so, but simpler times, boy. I'm trying to imagine that. Yeah. I mean, I think about that. I think of the simpler time. You think of going to your grandparents as a little kid, mm-hmm. you alluded to, and, you know, you might play a board game or you might play Uno or, mm-hmm. or something like that and right. eat some of grandma's pie. And that's, right. that's a simpler time, right? <laughs> right. Because you don't have all these distractions. And uh, so, ah, boy, I don't know how we get back there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, re- I don't know how you ever get back there. Jennifer? 
So I know you're a big block scheduler. I am. And so that's just what I see. And um, my prayer team, we're reading a book right now. And so one of the things they said, like, you need to schedule an appointment with Jesus every day mm. because then you're not going to move that and make it as important as everything mm. else. You don't miss a lunch with a friend. You don't miss a staff meeting. You don't miss those things. So why do we put that off? And sometimes right. it's like, and I'm, I am bad about that. You know, like I get up for my day and I'm like, I love coming to work. I love getting up. I love getting going instead of sitting there and like taking an hour because I'm like, but I need to, I need to do something first thing. And then I could do mm-hmm. something here and then I could do something at the night, you know, or whatever that looks like. And, you know, you talk about board games or something mm-hmm. like that. It's like block things out. Like I want to try to get with my parents once a month and Eric's parents the other month and go out with someone here and actually like start mm-hmm. filling those times and make that be in like a priority mm-hmm. in our life. And then everything else can fall into it, you right. know, and that's what you need to do. You need to pick those rocks and like, this is not moving, you know, and our right. time with Jesus should be one of those. That should be one of the first things you put. Don't let somebody else schedule. steal it. Don't steal it. Yeah. Right. Because then you can say no to other things like, no, I don't have time to do that because that is my, that's my priority. That should right. be our first love that we should mm-hmm. do. So a lot of conversations yeah. working with youth groups and stuff in the past mm-hmm. is, you know, how do you, de- how do you dedicate that time? You know, mm-hmm. kids, or kids are different. They, they want to be up all hours of the night. Mm-hmm. I'm wired. I'm up at 5, 530 in the morning. So mm-hmm. I always say, you know, my time is going to be out. I'm going to get up, start my coffee, get right. in the shower, go up to my office. And mm-hmm. I got 15, 30, 20 minutes, 30 minutes in my office when nobody's awake. Right. And that's my time. Mm-hmm. And, and again, but I still have those distractions. Mm-hmm. I still have the computer sitting there saying, oh, man, mm-hmm. I'm <laughs> calling my name. <laughs> if, if, I, if I do this email now, I'll have to do it later, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Yeah, I'll give you... Prioritizing is important. We're at yeah. 16 minutes and a half. So. No, I know. We're ending it right now. <laughs> I'll just give you some things How for me. 15. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, yeah. No, we're good. <laughs> no, it's good. So the thing for me <laughs> is teaching people to measure the rhythm of the soul, not the rhythm of your body. Mm. Because a lot of times we, we mm. change mm. our schedules based upon what our bodies can handle, mm. and we wear our souls out. And so mm-hmm. I try to teach people that part of block scheduling is to find the rhythm. And I, you know, I've said this with staff mm-hmm. is like, you got to find the rhythm, not in what works for you, but what refreshes your soul. Because mm-hmm. the most important thing for us as a staff at Life Church and for us as Christian people is to give what we have mm-hmm. that's overflowing, not to pour our cup out. Mm-hmm. And so it's very important for us to learn the rhythm of the soul, mm-hmm. you know, and I think it's different for everybody. And so after reading that book, I had to try to figure out what are those things that are killing the rhythm of my soul. So one of the things I noticed was notifications. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't even know this. Like, I didn't know that you could turn those things off. Mm. Like, I had no <laughs> idea that it doesn't have to, like, you don't have to eliminate all these things, but these constant, like, mm. I want your attention, mm-hmm. I want your attention, I want your attention, weren't good for my rhythm, mm-hmm. right? Like, that rhythm in my life was was not mm-hmm. good. I did that a while back myself, turning yeah. all those off. Yeah, so I had, so that was just one, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things that, for me, and then I think taking opportunities at the end of the day and at the end of the the week to see are the rhythms working because it changes Mm -hmm. like your rhythms Mm -hmm. change Mm -hmm. all the time. And I think it just depends on season of life and the things that are going on. And, and I think, you know, clear back to what we said from the beginning, if we want to watch and be ready, right? Like that's the whole idea. If we want to be ready when, when we're at our taking our last breath, we want to be ready to go, not fighting. Right. Like right. we're like, I'm, I'm it. I'm ready. When Jesus comes mm-hmm. back, we should be waiting, not being like, can you, can not you wait waiting, a few not minutes waiting for a sign? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like we don't right. need to, like, we should just be like excited about that. And I think that happens when our soul's right, mm-hmm. you know, and when our soul is right and when we're doing things that refresh our soul. Mm-hmm. And I think we have to be honest. Like, listen, we can't be so prideful to think, I got the people are looking at my life and if I slow down, people are going to think I'm a bum or if I'm not involved, people are going to think. And so you just have to be, you know what, for today, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. these are the rhythms that work for me that are refreshing my soul. And I want to be ready. You know, I want to be ready for people, you know, so Jamie Jackson. Well, you mentioned pride and I'd wrote a note down Sunday morning that uh, verse 34 is talking about anxiety will be a trap. Mm -hmm. And that just made me think that anxiety is just my pride. Yeah, it really is. Mm-hmm. It just boils right back to the last week's yeah. message. Right, and uh, and and I just I don't I don't want to keep going here. But no. the, I was listening when I when I'm delivering a bus. I don't have my uh, 
Sirius XM or I don't no. have my Apple Music, so mm. I'm scrolling channels, you mm. know. <laughs> um, so today, I don't even know who it was, and I feel I should know who it was, but it was a sermon, you know, and mm. so I was listening to it. And the, the quote that caught me, and it wrote right, right along with your sermon, I think, um, is don't let the worry about time take the focus off eternity. Mm. Yeah. And I thought, you know, that's that goes right back to being ready all the time, mm-hmm. not not looking for a sign. And, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people, they just worry. They worry mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. end times, and they worry about this, and they worry about that, you know, war. And right. you spend every day of your mm-hmm. life worrying about it. What kind of life are you really having? Right. You right. know, so, mm-hmm. but that, that, that one's just, for some reason, that just stuck to me, you know, yeah. and. I'm, so, mm-hmm. I'm a warrior. I, I used to, I don't <laughs> worry like I used to, but I used to be a really mm-hmm. bad warrior. I mean, when I was in college and taking exams and playing basketball and stuff, it was like two batums every other day, you know, <laughs> just because I was always worried about stuff, <laughs> you know. So mm-hmm. yeah. So let's let's end it up with this. So for our audience, you guys that are listening along, uh, maybe start with this: a true evaluation of your soul. I mean, I think that mm-hmm. if we just take an opportunity, if your soul is weary something needs to change Mm -hmm. like and um there there is no there is no pride like we shouldn't have a pride that we've wore ourselves Mm -hmm. out Mm -hmm. and that our soul is weary and that he calls us to rest and to rest in his presence right and to be able Mm -hmm. to uh and that just goes back if you're resting in his presence with him you will be ready, mm-hmm. you will be watchful, and you will be waiting. So, again, we'll just thank everybody for joining us on this Storyteller uh, podcast, and we encourage you over the next 10 weeks to keep coming back and keep hearing from our guests with great insight and uh, add a lot to the conversation and allow us to be able to speak with you and to be able to learn from each other what it looks like uh, to learn from the greatest storyteller out there in Jesus and unlock the mysteries that will allow us to live life and life to the fullest. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you guys next week.